How many of you here forget things? Maybe forget your keys or your wallet, or maybe you're that annoying person in the cinema who forgets to turn your phone off. Just turn it off. I want to watch a movie. Well, this is my story about how I forgot the most important thing in life, and that was to live. For me, it all began after I came home from that first day of university and turned around to mum and dad and said, "I'm never going back." <laughs> Simple, but what I didn't know was why I wanted to go or why. So I thought, is it because all my friends are going and I just want to do what they're doing, or is it because I didn't want to disappoint my parents, or is it because it's the next logical step after school? We're told we finish school and we think about our career, what we want to be for the, our lives. Go and study, go and get an apprenticeship. Well, I didn't have that. I didn't know why. So I decided to take a year off, and in that year, I'd work and earn some money. But soon enough, one year became two, two became three, then four, then five, and so on. And here I was, years later, in a rut, no direction, no idea what I wanted to do in life. I was depressed, and then. I realized my life was a routine. This may be familiar for some of you. It's wake up, have breakfast, get ready for work, drive to work, work in a job, and don't know why. Have lunch, go back to work, finish work, drive home, have something to eat, have a shower, lay down, chill out, watch some telly, go to sleep, wake up, and on and on. This had been going. For my previous years of life, and then one day something happened. My life changed. My routine went a little different. It was wake up, have something to eat, get ready for work, drive to work, work, have lunch, go back, work some more, finish work, drive home. On my way home, I was rear-ended by a four-wheel drive, which crushed the boot of my car in. Pushed me into oncoming traffic, and I finally came to a halt on the curb of the road. It snapped my driver's seat, laying me out in the back. And as I turned over and looked to the left, there was my number plate sitting right next to my head. I quickly felt around and made sure everything was where it was meant to be. Luckily, it was, because I jumped out of the car without a scratch on me, and I began to laugh just out of shock. I thought to myself. I almost lost my life, and then I thought about it some more. What life? Because I hadn't been living; I'd been purely existing in this world, going around a routine with no idea why, no direction, and no goals. A few days later, I got a call from the insurance agency, saying they'd pay me out as my car had been totaled. So with this, I had two choices. I saw I could. Buy another car and go back and get a job and keep working, or I could do something I'd been meaning to do for a long time, and that was to go travelling. So that's what I did. I travelled. I went and saw new places and tried new things, experienced new foods and new cultures, met new people and made new friends. And it was one of these friends who passed me along a book. It was called the One Week Job Project. It told the story of a young Canadian named Sean Aiken, who didn't know what he wanted to do after he graduated from college. So, he decided he'd work 52 jobs in 52 weeks around North America. Pretty amazing. For me, after reading that, the travelling continued and the fun times were still fun. And eventually, I had to return to Australia. And it was when I got back here I started to think to myself, "Wow." Traveling has expanded my knowledge of the world, and I'm starting to understand it a little better. But I still hadn't figured out what I wanted to do in this world. I thought back to Sean's book. Well, hey, that's the answer. If one guy can do it, what's stopping me? Nothing. So, I packed my bags and sold off my belongings. Then, in 2012. I'd worked 
52 jobs in 52 weeks around Australia. I asked my employers to make donations to charities as opposed to paying me wages, because money was not the fulfillment I was after this year. My fulfillment would come from finding my passion. And guess what? It worked. I was a range of things. I got to be a lawn mowing man, a sign writer. Whoop. I was a lawn mowing man, a sign writer. I got to be a roadie on the Foo Fighters tour when they came out here. I got to work at the Richmond Football Club as their water boy. My first ever time at the MCG, running out in front of a crowd of 50,000 people. Sure, I wasn't kicking a goal, but I was running out and just the atmosphere was amazing. What an experience. I got to be a cook. I was a movie usher. I had the chance to be a producer, a social worker, and even a tour guide. I had other opportunities. I worked in advertising. I got to clean toilets at music festivals. Woo! <laughs> I got the chance to work with Nova as a Nova Casanova down in Sydney. I got the chance to go on Sunrise and tell my story. I was a movie producer. I got to work on movie sets. I was a brewer, and I even had the chance to work as a poster boy and stand-up guy for an organic tampon company. Wandering around Woolworths, telling people what it means to buy organic. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just naming a few. So surely by now, some, some of you must think, I'm crazy, right? Well, people throughout the year, when I'd tell them what I was doing and what I'd set out to do, would often go, man, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. I, you're crazy for doing that. But let me ask you something. What is crazy? Is crazy dedicating one year of your life to traveling around, having new experiences, trying new things in order to figure out what you want to do with your life? Or is crazy spending the rest of your life in a career or a job with no reason why? Except it gives you money, which is to pay the bills and to be blown away on a weekend, which doesn't even really exist. The weekend's just in our minds. It doesn't exist. Because to me, that second one, that's not living. That is purely existing. And I guess I need to ask you this. Are you living or are you just existing? Now, when I first began One Week Job, I set out I thought, yeah, I'll do 52 jobs in 52 weeks. And surely, by the end of it, there'll be one, one that I'm passionate about, and that will be the one for me. And that's it. But I was wrong, because One Week Job was about so much more, and I learned so much more. It's about trying new things and stepping outside of your comfort zone, not being afraid to give it a go. It's about surrounding yourself with like-minded people who want to help you achieve your goals in life, and at the same time, you are helping them. And it's about being selfish to be selfless. And by that I mean doing something for yourself that makes you happy, and in turn, you'll have a positive reaction on those around you. Just as Sean's actions on the other side of the world rippled across to me, and had a positive effect on where my life was going, the choices you make in life can have a positive effect on those around you and on the world. Because our passions don't just have to be the jobs we do. They can be everything we do in our everyday life. So think about what you're passionate about. And remember, it's not about what you want to be in life, but how you want your life to be. Now, I realize not everyone here can just pack it all in and go, you know what, I'm going to sell off my stuff and I'm going to go travel around for a year and do 52 jobs. But here's the beautiful thing. You guys don't have to. It's as simple as making a choice. Because the choices that we make in our lives will impact where our lives are heading. 
So think about your next choice or your next choice. And think about the impact it can have on your life. And don't stop there. Think about every single choice that you make from now on and where that's going to be leading you. Is that where you want to be going? Because the choices you make that determine where you're going. I want to finish on one final story. A couple of weeks ago, I got a Facebook message from my old school captains to inform me that our 10-year reunion is coming up next year. And at first, I was like, 10 years? Man, I'm old. <laughs> but I just thought about how fast that had gone by. 10 years, like that. And then I began to think about, well, what am I going to do with the next 10 years of my life? And it doesn't have to be that daunting a thought, because you realize how much you can do in only one. We're not here on this world for very long. Seriously, think about it. How much time are we actually here for? We never know. Could be a short time, could be a long time. But why aren't we using our time on this planet to start living? Don't just exist. If there's something you want to do, go and do it. Just like the Avet brothers say. Decide what to be and go be it. Don't wait around for the world to give you everything, and don't wait around for a car crash to wake you up. Stop waiting and start doing. And if you don't know what you want to do, try something new. Try many things new, and keep on trying until you find that one thing that one thing, or many things, that speak to you. Don't be limited by dreaming only as far as you can see, but see how far you can dream. Thank you. <laughs>